project. Well, here we are at the Loretta Hilton in St. Louis. Well, let's go find out what's showing. Come on with me. Come on outside.
gonna be here every minute. And you know, then you two shots come right out and ask you to let her catch on Sadie Hawkins' stand. The man is when she catches me, well, I gotta marry her. And what could they tweet at that? But what the boy ever think you said to me? why don't you go mosey on down in the town? But go on, see what's doing down in the lower bank district. But I'm very sad. I love the preferred around here. And when I prefer, you concur. But for this, I have spoken. Now you be sweet to that gal. But well, Mammy, the boys is waiting for him down at the fishing hole. Yes, sir. Morning, Mammy, Anna, morning, Daisy. Morning, Daisy. A great good morning, Anna. Words? Why, well, person, think it be Valentine's Day or something. Thanks, Daisy. Hope you like it. The fresh, firm, and big. Oh, just like your dog self. Oh, Mammy. Thanks, Daisy. I'll leave these worms out. Boys is waiting for me. Boys, can wait. Ain't you, Daisy, got some talking to do? Is it about saying Hawkins, Daisy? Yeah. Sorry, Daisy. That's a subject I can't discuss. Except for one thing. You keep waiting around for me, well, you liable to throw your whole life away. And I couldn't stand that. This year, you just better catch yourself somebody else. Sometimes I think I just hate it, laughter. Now you don't, child. And you're gonna catch him come St. Hawkins Day. Even if we have to do business with an adjustable. Whatever available. Available don't matter what we can do. That sounds all right for the average man, Sam. But since I'm prepared to extend myself financially, what are you in a $2 with? My $2 with? Well, my boy, it's spectacular. First, I strip you to the waist and wrestle the four biggest guests, male or female. Oh, on the ladies. Morning, Sam. Go on, Sam. Well, next I tell four of color jokes guaranteed to embarrass man or beast then. As the applause dies out, I dance the jig with a bitch. Ties my arms and legs to four infuriated mules, and as they're running away trying to tear me apart, I recite five of the more dynamic speeches of Outlander. Backwards. Well, that sounds all right for the lower classes, but the lady I have in mind is entitled to a little more boy for the more than it. <laughs> My Daisy Max. She's looking especially pretty today. Thank you, And this one is a rat vermin like yourself. What with information about a $2 wedding? Could be I'm aiming to get married since I just returned home with my newly acquired title named that world's sturdy rapture. And being so well healed, naturally, I ain't to win me a certain dog pass gal. Are you crazy or something? You know a man can't claim gal unless you catch him a step on say you hop if you want the answers, I suggest you perambulate over to the farm family that's about to be held at Compton Square. Compton oh, Square? Yeah, you mean this is going to be a Compton meeting? By direct request of my good friends, that is a jackass farm family. <laughs> this could be serious. <laughs> well, now, we only have Compton meetings to decide issues of national importance. Oh, I mean, he changed the dog pet way black. They'll be a hideous change, all right. But they turn it up to four hours. Well, I don't crave your business. But I can't discriminate. Uh, first, I clip your toenails and give you a quick shave and a sponge bath if you need it. And uh, frankly, I'd say you need it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 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 you tell them I love them, they love us. And when they see your good brothers, they love us. Brothers, they brothers. <laughs> <laughs>
case coming up. Abner, you figuring on letting the baby made this this year? Don't think so. It ain't worth the price. What price? Give it up, little brother. Which brother? Oh, you brother go hunting, you brother stay home, you brother do this, she brother do that. I tell you today, you kiss your bride alone. Kiss your brother goodbye. I didn't know your brothers was that important to you. Important? If I had my brother, I'd brother have my brother than anything else I know. What you brother hustle, what you can lay in muscle, I'd rather watch the
match. And uh, on a day of Dean Dolby, the players open it down and you race the cold home meeting. Ha ha ha! How would you blame the cold home? Bishop, this meeting was requested by the steam center, the Honorable Jack S. Bullman. <laughs> Yes, sir. Yes, I'll say. Oh, wait a minute, Ruby. Don't want that child. Come here, Scarlett. Scarlett, honey, it's high time you knew that our town was founded by that beloved man that sat right there on that horse. Jubilation Peak on, Paul. The greatest spot in general and military strategist the Confederacy ever knew. Sarah, yes, but fear never. And all over the countryside, there's monuments commemorating the names of his famous battles. Such as... Cornhome's disaster, Cornhome's catastrophe, Cornhome's misjudgment, and Cornhome's humiliation.
my beloved constituents of Dog Patch. I could stand here and bask in the sunshine of your warm green forever. Bask for your old time, Paul Brown. Yeah, get to the point. Now, I bet you all wonder what I've been doing up in Washington these last 18 years. We didn't really care so long as you were there. And we will be with you. What? Senator, tell them what you've done for us down in Washington. I done got the United States Senate to pass the Jack S. Paul Brown bill. <laughs> Through my efforts, the little old dog pack, obscure, unknown, poverty stricken dog pack, is going to be world famous! In the big world part is we gonna be famous for what for? You was gonna save the lifeblood of a vigorous, thriving American industry. Oh, that's what for. Which industry is that, Senator? My boy, a glorious young industry devoted solely to the stimulation and relaxation are so necessary to the American businessman. An industry known as Las Vegas. Las Vegas? Ain't there one of those dual Yes, sir, Mandy Yoka. And right there's their problem. You see, in a desert nearby, the government's shooting off certain uh, nuclear weapons of war. Uh, ain't my boss. Yes, that's right. And the dust in the bombs is floating down and settling on them Las Vegas swimming pools and on them beautiful green milk crabs. Oh, oh, that fall industry. I tell you, them dice is turning so black you can't hardly tell whether you got snake eyes or box cars. Oh, the green belt is a turning so brown you can't tell whether your money's playing the field or coming the hard way. Oh, oh, the color is a going on them slot machines. Oh, you can't tell no more whether you got two cherries or three plums, three bells or two oranges. And when you hit the jackpot, you don't dare touch your money, because it might be ready in your way. Oh, I am just Don't you think your government is going to stand by and let this tragedy happen to an American industry, to whom so many have given so much for so little? Oh, no. no, my good friend. And that's why the Jackass Fall Brown Committee has been chosen. Well, to find a new place to set them off? Yes, sir. A place we can blow off the face of the earth. A spot that ain't even going to be missed. In fact, the most unnecessary place in the whole USA. Well, I'll be gone. And I have the honor and privilege of announcing that after a four-year government survey called the No Good, No Count Places in this whole USA, you have been selected as the most unnecessary place. United States government. Oh. And yet the government scientists are going to supervise your evacuation. Citizens meet Dr. F. Muslim T. Finzel. <laughs> Friends, citizens of Dog Patch, we intend to move you from Dog Patch to a necessary place in our society. The first detonation will be on Wednesday. The evacuation will begin immediately. Good luck and thank you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> As I bid you farewell, I beg you, don't let me down. Remember, you're going to spend one million dollars on one bomb to blow your holes off the face of the earth. So show your appreciation. <laughs>
No, there is nothing necessary about an old ass bucket, a uh, Civil War vintage rifle, or a mangy old mutt. Pink bow or no. Next! Oh, I'm next, I'm next. <laughs> How about an application like the Clara Bow Fan Club? Yeah! Next. Uh, well, well um, uh, five feet cool with Coolidge Bucks. Next. Uh, we're not going to get the bread place Bella Presley. Move along. I got it! I got it! A 1925 Sears Roebuck catalog. Special dog catch edition. <laughs> but there's no printing in it. All the pages are blank. We didn't have no money that year, so he sent out blank just to keep up the goodwill. Well, that's very interesting, my good man, but hardly a necessity. It is if you lived in dog patch. Now, now here's this, all of you. The trucks will be leaving immediately. Pack your things. Wait a minute. Here comes the man of Jones. I had it, I had it. The most necessary innovation in my time. Quickly, what is it? Mm, put these on. <sighs> What does it do? Our heavy weapon, sir, guaranteed to stupefy any human male dead in this crash. I'll demonstrate it. Hey, Stephen McGrath, come on over here. Stupefy. I'm stupefied. What you want? Nothing, Speedy. Well, sir. Fascinating, my good man. But of what utility? Why, she's being valuable with college football. She can stop the zoo on a one yard line. <laughs> Who couldn't? That's. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
think of them choices. He's big firewood. Cheap hot that ain't fit for human consumption. Can it be produced inexpensively? Yeah, if you pay more than an equal of one bar, you violate the fair trade law. Huh. An alcoholic beverage that can be produced and sold to the American public at less than five cents per quart. Perhaps I'd better have a taste. No need to bother, Doctor. Here, I'll try some. Oh, very well, if you like. medical tests of the Abner Yoakum drug. To establish its effectiveness, six patriotic citizens from Dog Patch have volunteered as human guinea pigs. Comprehensive tests on these six men started today, but the results will not be known for some time. A late bulletin has just been handed me. The President of the United States has just summoned Abner Yoakum to the White House for a statement of Yoakum's intentions regarding his disposition of the drug. Mr. Yoko, is it true that the ownership of the tree, and hence the drug, is completely and solely yours? Yes, sir, Mr. President, your majesty. What do you intend doing with the drug? Well, I reckon, sir, that as a 100% red blood American, I intend to do whatever it is for the good of the United States of America, of which he loves and respects. At ease, men, that's very commendable, but you haven't answered my question. Do you intend to sell the drug? Well, I reckon, sir, that uh, since it come out of the ground, it don't rightly belong to anyone special. 
and as a 100% red blood American, well, I reckon I'll just donate it free to the United States government, which he loves and respects. <laughs> Mr. Yoakum, you make me proud of my country. Well, Mr. President, that makes two of us. Make it three. <laughs>
<laughs> got an outsider in it? Show can. Ha ah, ah, Then we've got it. We go to Dog Patch. A patch not here's the Sadie Hawkins Day race. She runs the race. She catches Andrew Yoke. She marries Andrew Yoke. Then, by community property, she owns half of everything he owns. Specifically, Yoke Berry Time. Then, if some accident should befall the poor fool, you, as young widow, will be the sole possessor of the entire drug. Oh, but Bobby, sweet, uh, what if I uh, don't catch him? I never run anymore. You'll run this time, or you'll be back at Howard Johnson's. Bob Baron, can you make sure she catches him on Sadie's office day? General, I know the man for the job. <laughs> okay. Pack your things, Apassionata. We're headed for the hill. I tell you, by Tennessee Ernie and Tennessee Williams, we'll show those hillbillies what's what. Right, boys? Right. right. Uh, he the road that he intends to keep it that way. Well, good for General Bowers, it's good for the USA.
you're brave enough to do, get to do it! Yeah. It's just say the Hawkins State equipment here. Run and shoot. What's the back size you got? What size you want? I take size 14. You? No, I take this. That's pretty narrow, but it's available. Where's Amy? How come she didn't come down here to meet me? Well, uh, maybe she don't want nothing to do with you, son.
Don't come to the action fire. I jumped up and down. Rotate my eyeball. Rear back, let's go out of the Triple whammy, which catches the flea and opens smack in his back. What happened? His bone marrow freezes and his pancreas petrifies. All his red car puzzles and white car puzzles suddenly stand stock still and stupidly stare at each other. Whereupon he dashes up and grabs the body, but this supposedly stares no way. Oh, but is he dead? We don't know. He can't always tell. What? You guarantee you thaw out? Absolutely. Flegel, you do every yoke, and you've got a job with me for life. That's just so you I have confidence, my little fellow. He's the same color as mine. Yeah. <laughs>
Irvine, Washington, D.C. Here in our nation's capital, the secret government tests on the Abner Yoakum miracle drug continue behind the cloak of top echelon security. While little is known of the progress of the six guinea pig volunteers from Dogpatch, rumor has it that their reactions have exceeded Bonda's hopes of the jubilant government scientists working in the super secret laboratory. <laughs> Smithmore, 
go down the hall and perform the volunteers' mass spectrographic isotopic double diathermal diaphonoscopes. Static. Yes, sir. Oh, pardon me, Dr. Bensdale, sir. But just what is a mass spectrographic isotopic double diathermal diaphonoscope? Smith form. Do you mean to tell me that you, a super secret government scientist <laughs> in a supersonic, super secret government laboratory, do not know what a mass spectrographic isotopic double diaphonal diaphonoscope is? No, sir. How did you get a government job? I was terribly loyal, sir. What's your IQ? I don't have any, sir. <laughs> I'm just terribly loyal. Just go. <laughs> Excuse me, Dr. Finsdale, just what is a mass spectrographic isotopic double diathermal diaphonoscope? How the hell should I know? I was just terribly loyal, too. <laughs> <laughs>
promised to get married. But they was going to kill him. Don't make no difference. You know, he died before he breaks his promise. But they did tell us. Well, let me do it my way, Hammy. I'll just have to use my feminine vibe. And not a while. Daisy, what are you doing here? I just had to come, Abner. Well, how'd you get in? I sneaked in. <coughs> oh, Abner, I just had to see you once more. Oh, God, Daisy, you sure are sad for sore eyes. Am I, Abner? Oh, you sure is. I've come up here, Abner, since I know you so well. I thought I might be able to give your attendant some advice. Advice? About some good things to make you happy. She's always sweet to you, Daisy. Like at breakfast, how much cream and sugar you lost on your cold pork chop? Well, Mr. Pachinata ain't exactly the cold pork chop type. And how did you get special worms and bait your hook? But most of all, how did you fix up your home? Could it be a nice and loving home? Like the one you and I might have. Would have been a right nice one, too. Remember that piece of land you always liked? Back between Poison Oak Gulch and Contagious Lane. Right behind the school. Nice view of the skunk works. Walking distance from unnecessary night. Show a pretty spot. Oh, it has a sweet little place, Anna. Not some big old home house like this one. Just those eyes and those shoes. I, I can see a rocking chair and a house and a lamb and a... And love.
And besides, Mr. Passionato is trying to marry me. And I ain't aiming to break no more hearts than I already have. Then run for your life, that New Yorker. That Christ they's aiming to kill you. That General Booth in your precious intentions. Daisy, well, how can you say such a terrible thing? But it's true. I heard him say it in this very room. Oh, Daisy, you making this up, honey. You're a fog out and you're still miserably in love with me. For which I don't blame you, because I can understand how it happened. <laughs> And you you run for your life. Daisy, I want you to go home and forget all about me. No, Abner. You heard me. I, I have spoken. Well, Abner, you better get out of here. Abner, 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 Let me show you how the land 
hate to do this, my boy, but I'm sure you understand. Well, I can't blame you, General. They hadn't ought to behave this way. <laughs> All right, start moving. Let's we do something. Well, hold on a second. Hold on. Uh, General Bogle, sir, uh, we thought we caused this disturbance, but we was under the impression you aimed to hurt our friend Abner, who we love with the door. Preposterous. Well, we was wrong, so we are going to go quietly. Double-crossing! Make it a grab! Earthquake, you the gentleman. Thank you, Abner. Uh, but I'd sure like us all a caught friend, so I'm asking Brother Bullmoose if we could join you and Abner in a toast to his new bride. Well, I'm not one to hold a grudge. Where's the champagne? Well, I told you he was friendly, lot. To the bride be. May the flower of her innocence burst into blossom and bring happiness to this young, fine young fellow. <laughs> there you have it, a ricochet truth well by Mr. Bull Moose. Now he's got to tell the truth. That's right. Mr. Policeman, just you listen to this. General Blue Moon, if you are, if you not, an open up cross the snaggling crew. Would you repeat your question? <laughs> if you are, if you not, an open up cross the snaggling crew. Yes, madam, I am. Oh, and oh. what did you tell you when they have no good? Subject him to evil eye plea with truth whammy. No, he tell you. The secret formula of Yokeberry Tonic. Well, upon you, did Further use of nefarious E.E. E. Flegel. Not from this. Put a suicidal whammy on a go with Yoke. No, no, no. Jump in my fastest sports car. And subsequently. Drive yourself off the nearest cliff. Make it in a heat of life. Accidental death. Well, really? Truthy boy. Cold-blooded, premeditated murder. Oh, oh. Now attention everyone, all you dog catchers are now here by order to return to your homes immediately and resume your orderly evacuation. Evacuation? You crazy man, the bomb has been canceled. There are buses outside waiting to transport you all back to dog catchers. But Mr. Army Man, what about our young Americanic? The young Americanic tests have been declared a failure. Oh, now, Mr. Yoakum and you ladies whose husbands have been used as guinea pigs, a special bus is also outside waiting to transport you all back to the laboratory. What for? You'll find out at the laboratory. Step lively, everyone. This way, Mr. Yoakum and you ladies. Oh, my God. Just a minute. I want you, Ben Square. You's coming with me. Please, Ben Square, not so hard enough to be here. Well, but remember, you mine now forever and forever. Yes, that's great. And yours now. <laughs>
Where's your husband? Why not? Thank you. 
fucking will take sweet. Mm-hmm. You hear Shepard? What? You hear Shepard? What you was going to hear Shepard? Stay here. I've got some talking to do, my boy, and by God, I'm going to do it. Look, hey, me Now, woman, you get it. I'll switch to you when I get back to dog pit. If I catch a notion to. Look, hey, me Now get it. I have spoken. <laughs> Sonny, suppose if I told you I know a way to get you and these boys out of that miserable condition. Oh, Pappy, please. Don't make light of something so serious. Oh, there is a way, Sonny. There's a sure way. What is it? Why, it's a special potion developed by our beloved founder, Jubilation Tea Coffee. Oh, Pappy, I've taken enough tonics and potions already. Yeah, but you haven't taken corn cones, passionizing and romanticizing potions. Pappy. And that potion romanticized me and put these boys back the way they were? All I can tell you, son, is that when I was your age, I had a body your problem myself. So I picked a little swig of that potion. <laughs> what happened? And as I wiped off my mouth, I see your ugly little nanny come walking around the <laughs> All I can tell you is that sort of dried up little creature took to me like Lillian Russell <laughs> and Jim Novak. And a plate full of pork chops all over the <laughs> Come on, what are we waiting for? Come on! Just a minute, son. There's one very special condition that goes with that potion. In order to make it work, you got to really want to make it work. Oh, I sure does, Pappy. More than anything in the whole world. Sonny, and you boys? We do, too. Well, then keep going. There's a wedding day waiting for man or beast. And earthquakes cases get come both men. <laughs> Come on, fellas, let's go! <laughs> Western Union, I want to send a telegram to Mammy Oakham, Daisy Mae Scrag, and Marion Sam. Dog Patch, U.S. Bay. Message? Three words. Stall. 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 Others? I said, be the grab and ask to come for good news. 
The plane and the bomb are almost here. But I've only got one more little word. Not one word. Not one syllable. Not just one little word. No. All of you. Oh. Let's go get the statue. We ain't going nowhere without our statue of jubilation. Will you please get out of here? Get out of statue. There are trucks waiting. Searching for it here. Signed by Abraham Lincoln. Abraham Lincoln? Just listen here. Because of his lack of strategy, his military blunders, and his general ineptness, which almost single-handedly encouraged the North to win the Civil War, a grateful government dedicates this statue of General Jubilation T. Cornpone and proclaims it a national shrine. A national shrine! Good God! National Shrine. And you can't deface the National Shrine. Huh? You can't deface it, you can't move it, and you can't bomb it. <laughs> You're absolutely right. Notify Washington immediately. Stop the play. Citizens of Dog Patch, the evacuation is in. <laughs> cannot be consummated until we pay homage to the one man who made it all possible, who romanticized this boy, who put him back the way they was, who saved our town from being bombed. None of us. that beloved man that sent out there that beloved boy's jubilation, he thought of